Steve, after all of these years mm -hmm. that humans have been coexisting with GMOs, there are still people out there who don't want to eat them, don't trust them, think it's going to be the end of our civilization. What, what is up with that? I know. I get annoyed every time I see the GMO free label. At the supermarket. The no yeah. GMO. Yeah. I try label. not to buy stuff. Me that too. Says that. I avoid it. So GMO, genetically modified organism, you know, it's kind of an artificial category because they, they essentially say these technologies that are being used, bioengineering, to change the genetic information in crops or animals, uh, we'll call that GMOs. Mm -hmm. And... You know, and and we think that you know we're concerned about the safety and you know how what's going to happen is how it could have unpredictable effects on human health on the environment, but the category was always arbitrary because they like where do you draw the line? Because there's a lot of technologies that we use to alter the genes in our crops. No crop looks anything like what it was you know, in nature before we started tinkering with it. But you're talking about selective breeding at that point, so that's, right? Yeah, cultivation, selective breeding. Uh, that's like the most, you know, primitive form. But then there's also like making hybrids, you know, combining two plants together. And then you could say, well, how, how far afield does the hybrid have to be before you consider that to be a GMO? Mm -hmm. Like, cause, cause we could crawl, we could do forced hybridization where we get plants that wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, breed together in the wild to, to mix their genetic material. Is that GMO? Well, no, it's not, it's not a GMO if you do a forced hybridization. How come? They don't really have a good answer for it. It's just they had to draw the line somewhere. Well, I think people are, are afraid of when we tinker with, you know, literally the DNA of But of don't crops. demonize the technology. You want, you want to know is, is the particular organism safe or what, what properties does it have? Not how you got there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of irrelevant. So for example... Like, I think the one that is the most dramatic, like, why is this not a GMO, is something that's called mutation farming. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard of that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is, I always like to refer to the Simpsons episode where he spreads radioactivity on his farm and he grows the tobacco, right? Yeah. That was a Simpsons episode, but we do that. We literally do that. Yeah, that's yeah. called mutation farming. They use chemicals or radioactivity to increase the mutation rate. Then they plant hundreds, thousands of, of plants and they pick out the one or two that may have a beneficial mutation and the mm -hmm. rest. So they're using, they're, they're using those methods to speed up or, or increase yeah. the percentage of mutations, hoping that some good mutation comes yeah, out. Just, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it works. And it works. Yeah. A lot of our current crops were, were created through mutation farming. That's not GMO. Mm -hmm. Why? It's arbitrary. Yeah. But the radiation, Steve, will, you know, will kill you. Yeah. But there's no, yeah, but there's no radiation. <laughs> Yeah. In the, in the plants itself, obviously that's just used to make the DNA changes. Okay. Then you could, you could, for example, silence a gene, right? You can go in there, you could turn a gene off. You're not introducing anything. You're not adding anything to the genetic material. You're just turning off a gene. That is a GMO. Mm -hmm. Why is that a GMO? And mutation farming is per perfectly fine. Right. It's arbitrary. Yeah. Um, so now like England, not the UK, but England specifically just passed a law that, saying that they're going to allow genetically engineered crops. So mm -hmm. genetic engineering is the new term to try to get away from the GMO label. Right. Genetic engineering includes everything that was formerly GMO with one exception, and that's transgenic insertion of a gene. So what does that mean? So um, if you're inserting a gene that wasn't already there into a plant, let's say, if it's very close, if it comes from a closely related species, especially one that could have gotten into it through breeding, hybridization, then we call that cisgenic. Mm -hmm. And if it comes from a distant species that could not possibly have gotten into the genome of the organism you're modifying, we call that transgenic. So transgenic is where a lot of the fear mongering, it's like you're putting fish genes in tomatoes, right? That's all transgenic mm -hmm. GMOs. So England basically said, okay, transgenic, that's, that's actual GMOs and everything else, silencing a gene or putting in a cis gene, it, those, are, those are just genetic engineering. Those are okay. You think that'll help? Yeah, it absolutely will help. We're already doing that in the US as well. We're doing, they're doing that in, in Australia. So, but not Europe. Europe is still very anti-GMO, not, not uh, Russia. Um, so it hasn't, it hasn't fully penetrated. Not Africa. Africa is still also pretty anti-GMO. Um, 
again, it, it just shows you how completely arbitrary it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's also, we must say, there's no particular reason to think that any of these technologies are inherently risky or harmful. Mm -hmm. It's just whatever, what, what's the gene that you're putting in there? What's the gene that you're silencing? What, <clears throat> what's the actual effect of it? What new protein is it making? And any you know new organism that comes out because of genetic engineering, whatever your exact method, they're studied, like they're tested. We yeah. have to show that they're not gonna cause allergies or start killing people or whatever. They're perfectly safe. And now we have, as you said, we have 20 plus years, 25 years, a quarter of a century of experience uh, with GMOs and there's no problems. Like literally, we went from like in the 1990s, early 1990s, zero animals were, were fed with GMO mm -hmm. food, right? Grain and whatever. And now almost all animals, you know, livestock are fed with GMOs. We transitioned very quickly. We have trillions of animals have been fed with GMOs over the last 20 years. There hasn't been the slightest uptick in any kind of problem. Right. I mean, you, it would have shown itself if there was an Absolutely. actual problem. And the industry checks the disease state of every single animal that gets slaughtered, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like we don't have vast amounts of data. We're not looking. No, they're looking. There's no, there's no problem. There's no issue. There ha there's these, you know, the, the same old crappy fake studies that, that people tout, but the, the scientific evidence does not show any problem with GMOs as a category, mm -hmm. nor, sh nor would you think based on scientific principles that you would. It's really all just fear mongering, mainly from the organic lobby, to be honest, because mm -hmm. they're, they're, selling themselves as an alternative. Um, but it's none of it is based in good science or reasoning, which is why most science are like, yeah, GMOs are fine. Stop fear mongering about GMOs. Yeah. So you, you brought up, um, you brought up the anti, the lobby that mm -hmm. is against GMOs and it's, and it's tied to, um, you know, organic farming and all this stuff. So the organic farming is another thing that bothers me. I try to stay away from anything that has mm -hmm. that, that label. Steve, what's it going to take, though, to get people to just stop being so scared about this? Yeah, I mean, I think it's happening, and it's going to happen mainly stealthily behind the scenes. Let me give you an example. Um, Hawaii, uh, for various cultural reasons, is culturally very anti-GMO, and they, it's one of the states in the United States that has the most anti-GMO laws. However, they make an exception for the GMO papaya. Hmm. Do you know why they make an exception for the GMO there papaya? Because there would be no Hawaiian papaya <laughs> yeah. industry without the GMO papaya. Yeah. And it's also one of the GMOs where the, they just silenced the gene. There's no transgene in there or anything. So um, the benefit was so overwhelming. It rescued an entire industry that was critical to the state. They're like, yeah... We're anti-GMO and just don't, don't worry, we're forget about this over here. We're going to allow this over here, but they don't really publicize it. Uh, when Vermont made their like GMO labeling law, they carved out an exception for cheese, for cheese yeah. because cheese is made with almost entirely with GMO rennet, the enzyme. We used to source it from calf stomachs. Now we could have yeast crank it out and, and then the cheese industry exploded. So if you, if you either outlawed that or, or required, you know, onerous, scary labeling on it, you would tank the cheese industry. Mm -hmm. You would completely tank it. They're not going to let that happen. Yeah. So they just quietly carve out an exception for that. And you can see going forward how this is going to continue to happen. Like that when bananas, are, bananas are in trouble. Are, bananas are in huge trouble. And not only, like we think of bananas as a dessert fruit, but there are parts of the country where they get 70 of the world, Africa in particular, where they get 70% of their calories from staple bananas, like, you know, like the starchy bananas that you use like a potato, not mm -hmm. like a dessert banana. Um, so are we going to let, you know, millions, tens of millions of people starve rather than introduce a GMO, right. you know, fungus resistant versions of these bananas? Of course not. Of course not. Um, or how about the citrus greening in Florida? Yeah. It's yep. really being a problem. If, if we come up with a GMO orange that is resistant to citrus greening, do you think that Florida is going to let their citrus industry go under or are they going to use a GMO? Yeah, I, yeah right. So, so basically, as things develop problems, yeah. we'll, see, we'll see an increase in, in this kind of turn a blind eye acceptance. Yes. But I wish that there was a way for for governments to just not care about what people think like like i, I, I know i know <laughs> that's kind of hard in democracy yeah and to not care about what the yeah i think. guess my my point is what we want to do is educate those voters. yes we have to we, we have to get people them. to understand yes. like this is important right yeah. now one one thing that i read and we've discussed this on the show 
GMOs are the way that we're going to feed yeah. an increased population. It's one important technology. Yeah. It's not a panacea. It's not the only technology, but it's one of them of many. And again, this is like arbitrarily carving out one piece of the of the technology that we have is really counterproductive. It doesn't help anybody. It's just going to make it harder for us to find solutions. One of the advantages of the latest, you know, genetic engineering technologies is that it's a lot quicker mm -hmm. than than the older methods. And where, you know, pests and fungus and stuff, they're evolving quickly as we have a lot of, growing a lot of food, something's going to evolve to eat it. Yep. So keeping up with these environmental issues means we need to be able to quickly adapt our crops to these new pests or a changing environment, global warming. And in order to keep up, we're going to need genetic engineering. We're going to need that technology. There's also, you know, ways in which we could improve our food. You know, we talk about, oh, we waste so much of our food. Well, what if we could genetically engineer you know, plants so that like the fruit doesn't go bad as quickly on, mm -hmm. on the store shelf, that would reduce. Yeah, that'd food be waste. great. Yeah, that'd be amazing. So we already have, you know, like the non browning apples, et cetera. So there's already tech, you know, GMO technology to do that. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about golden rice, yeah, right? Golden rice is amazing. Putting vitamin A into, into a staple food that could potentially save, you know, hundreds of thousands of kids from dying, millions from going blind every year. Uh, there are other options. We're exploring those other options. They work to some extent, but this would be one other way to do it that probably be, would, would be more effective than anything we're already doing. And uh, there's no reason not to do it. Mm -hmm. There's no reason not to do it. Yeah, I mean, I guess just like any other industry, there needs to be logical, you know, things in place, you know, th so these markets are, yeah. you know, observed and people understand what's going on. There's yeah. regulations and all that stuff. But outside of that, which is normal for any industry, right? Mm -hmm. Well, having regulations put down by governments, you know, the GMO industry as a whole is necessary. Number mm -hmm. one, it, it's future-proofing problems that we know are coming. Right. Number two, and number three, and 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 in some cases, it makes improvements. Yeah, can improve our food. All right, Steve. Big question now. The Grow Michelle. Yeah. Banana. Well, GMOs bring that back. It already is is doing that. So there's an Australian company that is engineering a Grow Michelle banana that is you know um, resistant to to fungus gromer shell bananas never went away they just became they never went extinct they just went they were no longer economically crop, viable right? yeah. you couldn't grow them and ship them around the world because they were wiped out by the fungus the same one that's wiping out our existing banana crop and, and other lots of other bananas so we might actually be able to bring back a banana that um that was, you know, it's supposed to be much creamier, much richer, you know, much better than the one that we're, the Cavendish that we're, that we're eating now. Uh, there's so many potential benefits. I do think eventually the benefits will outweigh the skepticism, yeah. you know. And I also, I think, honestly, I think the real hardcore anti-GMO people know it. And they're trying to keep, like, they re their opposition to golden rice is based on nothing. Mm -hmm. It's based on nothing. They say, oh, we don't like the, they, they try to mix in other things. Like, we don't like the fact that GMO plants are patented by companies. Companies shouldn't own life. All right, so first of all, all, all crops that are the result, pretty much, of either hybridization or mutation farming, they're all pat patented too. Mm -hmm. So all of our crops already were patented before GMOs even came on the line. So it's not about the patents. It's not about that. Um, or they'll say, you know, that, you know, the companies are forcing farmers to buy these seeds. You know, far farmers are smart. They know what they're doing. And they, they buy these seeds because they make economic sense for them. Or farmers can't replant the seeds. They don't replant seeds anyway. Mm -hmm. And par some parts of the world, they may do that. And they could buy with the, use the seeds that they can replant. But um, it's, it's actually very uh, labor intensive to, to dry and keep and store seeds and plant them the next the next season it's a, it's a lot cheaper actually just to buy them again that you know seeds that were mass produced in a factory then try to keep your own right you know and yeah. if you're if you're making an heirloom variety then do that you could still do that farmers can choose to do whatever they want mm -hmm. to do uh they're 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 buying and using these high-tech seeds whether hybrid seeds or mutation farm seeds or gmo seeds or whatever genetically engineered when they have qualities that they don't like losing entire crops to pests, you know, they, they do that because it's economically beneficial to them to do that. So I think what's going to happen is that 
over time, and I do think the industry wants this to be quiet. I don't think they want to constantly be roiling, you know, the the, the public about GMOs. I think right. they just want to quietly just solve all these problems. And then one day you'll look around, you go, oh, we have GMO oranges in Florida and GMO bananas in Africa. And we have the GMO papaya in Hawaii. And we're now we're growing wheat that's 20% more productive mm-hmm. because they managed to get a better you know, photosynthesis or, you know, we're using less fertilizer because they, now we, these plants can all fix their own nitrogen and the world will have changed, It'll, you know, because of GMOs and there's going to be no denying it. Right. What are they going to say then? Let's go back to the way it was and starve a billion people. Yeah. No, it's going to be too late. I think it already is too late. You know, the, t- well, the only thing they really can accomplish is slowing us down, right. just slowing down the adoption of these useful technologies through really just naked fear mongering. Yeah, better living through science. <laughs> this is a, this is I think a really solid example of that. Mm. Absolutely.